Good deal. Okay, so um, yes, as Arnie uh, introduced everybody to, uh, we now know what the ARM Institute is. Um, Ar ARM was a uh, um, one of our funders for this uh, this special project with uh, Wichita State University, um, Spirit Aerosystems, where I am from, as well as Southwest Research Institute. Um, so we're just going to talk briefly about it. We only have uh, about 20 minutes, so I'm going to move fairly quickly, um, and then we'll have some questions at the end. So this was a year-long project, um, and like I mentioned, uh, ARM gave us about a third of the funding, and then the the three partners uh, also uh, ponied up funding and labor and uh, lab resources for the project as a, a large collaboration. Um, so collaborative robotic sanding um, is uh, essentially the goal of this project is to drastically reduce the cost of traditional robotics. And um, we used uh, ROS as a way of doing this, but also um, collaborative robotics was a big enabler. So um, what we're trying to do is go from this, the older technology, which is this picture on the left, large robot cells, you know, inside fenced in areas, they usually are very capable and uh, can do a lot of the work, but they're in that one and a half million dollars or more kind of price range. Um, what we wanted to do was try to take a zero off of that cost um, or at least a large step reduction. Um, and so our target was a collaborative robotic sanding cell that doesn't need fences, doesn't need uh, large safety systems uh, or foundation work. And you could continue work right alongside the, ro the robot um, so it would be considered human safe. So um, there's other benefits, of course, that we could get from this uh, quick deployment into the production environments. Um, new work statement can be added easily. Ross is one of our enablers for adding new work statement. Um, we want to increase productivity out, out in the shop. That's always the target of, um, of all of our automation projects. Now, this project is kind of specifically, uh, we're, we're taking a step back from the, uh, the goal to fully automate everything. Um, we're realizing that that's very difficult to do. And so for this project, we, we're only really targeting 80% of the work statement and then keeping the human operator in the loop for things like touch up inspection and uh, doing identification of areas that would need rework. This saves a lot of cost and a lot of complexity for only losing about 20% of, of the capability. So that's part of how we get that, that step change reduction in cost. One of the things uh, Ross also enables is uh, to eliminate the traditional NC programming path, which is very expensive and requires very skilled um, NC programmers. So with the automated path planning portion of this, we don't have to have um, the traditional NC programming path. So this is uh, kind of what the cell ended up looking like. Um, we have these parts here, they're in a cell panels and we use two robots. Um, uh, we only actually used one of them as part of this project since it's a proof of concept, but the cell's designed to hold two robots to sand approximately half the part per robot. Um, we do need to replace sandpaper pads, so you'll see in the video later, we've got these uh, um, sanding end effectors on the right side of the, the cell that the robot can kind of pick up and drop off uh, to get a new sandpaper pad and continue sanding. The way the cell operates, um, you'll notice our Concept of operations has kind of different color codes here. So the red operations are the manual processes that the, the human needs to be involved in. Um, and then the blue processes are typically uh, the automated processes uh, using ROS. So um, the part can be moved into the booth. Um, then in step two, we do a recognition and simulation step. So we use a, uh, um, a vision system to see the part and uh, um, do a frame transformation to uh, move the part to where it, it is in the cell. Then um, the, the raw system does the path planning with um, the CAD data that we have already. Um, it'll use the, the paths that are on the part in CAD. And now that it knows the parts in a slightly different location, it can redo um, and do path planning and uh, simulation of uh, any collisions and things like that. Um, after the operator approves that, the robot will go and sand. Um, it uh, may need to move the rail depending on the part size, but uh, um, we do a collaborative uh, process. So the, the operator can be in the cell at the same time. Um, he can do different sanding operations or um, you know, reload those sanding end effectors with more sandpaper. When it's complete, uh, the system will request an inspection from the operator 
operator. The operator goes and basically looks at the part, uses his uh, um, high skill to identify areas that need to be re-sanded or, or have an ad additional sanding done on them. He can mark on the part with like a, a Sharpie marker essentially. And then in step five, we'll use the same vision system we used in step two to uh, take pictures of the part, recognize where those uh, circles are or those closed shapes on the part. And uh, the ROS system can do a uh, crop of the tool paths so that it only needs to sand and only will sand those um, areas that were circled essentially. And it'll re-simulate that, revalidate it that it's not a collision-free paths and then do the re-sanding. So it kind of jumps back to step three. Um, the operator can choose to repeat this process multiple times, or if it's getting close to kind of the final stage where he can simply uh, um, do a quick manual touch up in step seven. Um, after that, we unload the part and the operation's complete. So I'm gonna focus mostly on the raw side. Obviously there was a lot of um, uh, hardware development and, and other things, but since this is primarily raw uh, um, interest, I'm gonna talk basically about that. So, um, these are all the different tasks that we do with Ross. So we do, um, you know, we've got scanning, registration. Um, there's a motion planning element, obviously. Uh, the process execution itself uses uh, force feedback from the robot. So we're using a UR10E, which has the integrated force uh, feedback capability. Um, and then the finally the rework detection where, where we um, detect those regions drawn on the part by the human. So this project, um, the team wanted to use ROS2 um, and develop in ROS2. So you'll notice that in this purple box here, the, the vast majority of the project is, is developed in ROS2. Um, however, the uh, the real robot driver for the UR10E, we don't have a ROS2, or at least we didn't have at the time. I believe they're working on one, um, but we didn't have a robot driver. So there is an element of this project that um, uses that bridge to then talk to the robot and I believe the force feedback uh, um, system had to be in ROS1 as well. So it could integrate or uh, talk directly to the robot back and forth with the force sensor. So um, that's one of the things that of course, we're very excited about having a ROS2 driver for, for the UR series robots um, because there's a lot of complexity in having this bridge and, and trying to work with both ROS2 and ROS1. So real quickly, I think most people have seen um, a registration process with Ross. Um, essentially, we take pictures uh, like uh, 3D point cloud uh, photos of the, uh, the part, and you'll see those kind of blue point dots in this bottom right picture. And then it does a best fit, essentially, and moves the part to the, the location. That worked pretty well for us for this project. For motion planning, once again, something that's fairly familiar to a lot of people, um, we used CAD data and uh, we're, we pre-put, uh, pre-located the paths on the part. So the um, the robot itself or the, the software itself was path planning to get to the start points and uh, um, essentially move down the paths and connect the, the paths together as it could. And then of course, break the paths up where it needs to do a, a, a sandpaper change. Also was able to um, kind of cut out areas it couldn't reach of these paths and still join them together. And then obviously do all of the uh, um, collision analysis and simulation for the operator before he actually clicks the go button. As far as uh, motion planning, this this is pretty basic um, motion planning that um, has been done many times before. I'm going to go ahead and jump past the slide for time. Um, talk about rework detection. So this is uh, um, pretty advanced, in my opinion, the way we were able to, uh, the team was able to uh, take these pictures of the human marked regions on the part and kind of extract those, those regions out, crop the tool paths, and then uh, um, do a, a, a repath plan to, to only touch those areas. And you'll see that in the video here in a minute. Um, the Swiri team used OpenCV uh, to filter these pictures and uh, kind of uh, dilate and, uh, and uh, they use the canny edge detection method um, to see these different regions. And then um, to get that from, um, to, to put it into 3D, um, they used uh, the, the point cloud library to, uh, basically uh you know get get rid of uh or add that uh 2d image into a 3d shape so that they could put vectors on the part and that's what you see here in this bottom right picture is the the vectors uh from the the 2d picture paste onto the 3d point cloud essentially um 
for the force controlled trajectory execution, um, the the forward dynamics compliance control was um, essentially used the the force feedback uh, from the robot and dynamically adjusted the targeted waypoint uh, that the the robot was being uh, directed to go to. I think this picture shows it um, in in more reasonable uh, or easy to understand terms. So so essentially to to make the robot speed up or slow down, you could move this red target waypoint to make the you move it further away from the tool and it'll it'll command the robot to move faster to try to try to catch up to that target. And then if you put the target underneath the surface, the uh, the robot will start pushing downwards on the on the part, and so the the distance uh, either above or below the surface can uh, um, essentially uh, control your force feedback. So, and that that was working in ROS one, if I if I didn't uh, say that incorrectly. Okay, so here's the video here. Um, this is our demonstration video, and uh, I have it playing at two x speed because we just don't have that much time. It's a it's a six minute video normally. <laughs> So uh, you'll see we've loaded the part into the cell. Now um, we're taking pictures with the, the camera that's on the end of the robot. Um, that's your, uh, it's a Framos camera, but it's your typical, uh, um, it's an industrial application of the, uh, the Xbox Connect type sensor. Um, so we've got those point clouds on the part and now it's uh, re-registered the part in its uh, correct location. Um, now it's doing some very quick uh, uh, path planning. And here's the simulation that uh, the operator gets to see before he clicks the, the go button. You'll notice there's a sandpaper change there, and then it will continue with the path plan. The operator will say, yep, this looks good. And uh, now we see the robot actually doing the sanding. On the top left, we've got a graph where we were able to see uh, how we were doing with the force control. Um, it's not super accurate. and with a lot of uh, a lot more work, we could have probably got it more accurate. Um, the green line is is what's uh, um, the actual resulting force, and then the black line is what we're trying to target at. So you'll notice we we do vary. Um, it was uh, eight pounds of force that we were targeting, and and we could vary as as much as a pound or so either direction. Um, but that was giving us good quality uh, sanding that was uh, close enough to what the human operator could do. So we didn't need to develop that further for this project. You'll notice uh, it's, uh, I'm gonna jump ahead here. Um, so now we're gonna do an end effector swap to get a, new, a fresh piece of sandpaper. And the way this worked is the, the ROS program would put it in the, uh, um, the home position for that sandpaper uh, change uh, program. And it would call the program that's, that resides as a teach program on the, uh, the universal robots uh, system. And then it'll continue to sand. I'm going to jump ahead again, and you'll notice it's sanding again. For the sake of time, I will jump ahead a little more. After this um, initial sand is when you'll see the, the human operator come in here. Um, the operator basically does that, um, that look at the part. He cleans the part off and then does an inspection. Um, for this project, I'm just drawing some circles on the part and some squares, different shapes for the robot to, to look at. And you'll notice it uh, <clears throat> it takes pictures of those uh, with the same camera that we used before. Um, we were using four different pictures for this and we were able to get good coverage of the part. Now you'll see those pictures come in very quickly on the screen and then they uh, um, once they're filtered out, they give these sections on the part to click and we were able to click these different sections and now it's got those cropped paths and it's doing the simulation of, of what that'll look like. And then it does the, the actual resanding itself. All right. So um, some of the tests we did just to kind of show you uh, without just seeing the video, we were able to move this part around in the cell and uh, and re-register the part in many different locations. Um, so that worked really well for us. You'll notice in this picture here, we've got it completely off angle from where it, it thinks it is, where the seed pose is, and it was able to, to register properly. Um, that worked really well. I already uh, discussed a little bit about the um, 
the force and how this you know this green line does have some some jumps above and below the target but it does it did do a good enough job for for how we were operating um, we were running at about 100 millimeters per second for this testing so one of our future targets is to see if we can go a little bit faster than that um, but that was giving us good quality standing so um, it was satisfactory for these tests um, you saw the the parts uh, or the drawn on areas uh, were able to be sanded. Um, we targeted uh, the project metric was was to get over 90% of those areas. So this is just to demonstrate that we were able to to resand 90% of those areas that were marked. So um, to get into kind of the 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 next steps for this project, we, we have a follow on project here at Spirit where we're um, using this cell. Uh, we actually purchased it from Wichita State so that we could continue using it. Um, or purchase the parts anyway. And uh, we're working on trying to bring this to production by the end of this year, or at least bring it to production ready by the end of the year. Um, so there's a lot of next steps here, but I've highlighted in purple kind of the ones that that have to do more with the software side of it. Um, so obviously the um, the the ROS2 robot driver is probably the biggest one. If we could get the bridge and the uh, um, and the ROS1 implementation all into ROS2 um, so that we only had one implementation to work with, that would cause, or that would be much, much simpler than, than our kind of a, a three, three step process to get, to get the machine running. Um, we do need some better handling of the UR robots and the way ROS um, path plans around singularities. So we had some issues with getting too close to a singularity and then maybe a, uh, um, a path plan would, would end up going through one. Um, the, the universal robots do have some issues with how large their singularity uh, zone of confusion actually is. Um, so some, some work with that would help. Um, the project wasn't really uh, um, user interface intensive. So um, we need for production, we need a, some, some GUI improvements. Um, there's some fault recovery improvements that need to be made. Um, you know, it, it was a, a proof of concept cell to TRL-6, so, so there's some work that can be done to make it more user friendly. We talked about uh, speeding up the efficiency of the cell, um, and that's a lot of what's needed for production is to kind of go from this, um, this lab setup to a, a production environment. Um, we need we need to speed up how quickly we can process uh, the path process, the path planning and the simulation checks. And then also even the, um, the, the photo taking steps to, to uh, um, do the, uh, the rework detection and do the uh, uh, part localization. Those, those could be done quicker, we think, with some cell mounted cameras instead of moving around the, the robot to take those pictures. Um, some pre-packaged routines and paths would really help with the reduce the path planning load. Um, that way, there isn't so much uh, so so much processor time that we're waiting on. And then, I mentioned before, if we could speed up how quickly we can move on the part, that would really help our cycle time. So um, that's the the really fast version. I, I know I only had twenty minutes, so I hope I honored that, or at least was close to that. Does anybody have any questions for us?